Hey guys, it's Trias here, and this is a Beefy Coop body. For this build, I'm going to be making an inline 6 muscle car based on the Stellantis Hurricane engine. This is due to Dodge in real life phasing out the Hemi engine for future car development. And a replacement for the Hemi engine is that Stellantis inline 6 engine. So starting off with our Americana car build, for the panel material right here, we're going to be selecting the partial aluminum panel material with a monocoque chassis made out of AHS steel, pretty much like most cars develop nowadays. With the front edge placement, good old front longitudinal, with the front suspension set to a double wishbone, and the rear suspension will be set to a multi-link suspension setup. For the engine, like I said, an inline 6 made out of aluminum with the bore set to an 84 millimeters and the stroke set to a 90 millimeters, which gets the engine size set to 2,993 cubic centimeters or about 3 liters for the hurricane engine. And real quick, let's change the name of this right here. So it's going to be the Stellantis Hurricane. That's not how you spell it. And the variant name, good old HO, for the high output version. And the heads we're using is a dual overhead cam 4 valve, also made out of aluminum. For the crank cow rods and pistons, these are the materials used in the real life hurricane engine. So for the crankshaft, I know it's made out of forged steel. With the con rods, for the sake of torque with this engine, we're going to be selecting heavy duty forged. With the piston set to a regular forge, with the balancing mass, of course, a harmonic damper for this bad boy. And this here put a plus 3 on the quality. For the compression, it is set to the real-life rating for the high-output version at 9.5 to 1 ratio, with the cam profile just 5 clicks up to a 45 for the Spinx lifters. Kind of the same thing, but 5 clicks down to a 45, kind of like the cam profile right here. And we're going to be using VBT at all cams, with the RPM it's set to the real-life rating of 6100 RPM. I mean, just look it up on Wikipedia and you'll see it. And of course, this bad boy will be turbocharged, a twin turbo setup with a smart boost system to... For the sake of the boost kick again at a much lower RPM to reduce turbo lag as possible. For the inner core, I think I put this to a 628 horsepower with a variable geometry ball bearing setup with the compressor size set for the first option at 52 millimeters right here. The turbine size set to a 46.1 millimeters. The third section of the compressor AR trim, just two clicks up for me at a 37. And lastly, for the fourth section for the maximum boost, is we're going to set this to a 26.1, a 26.11 PSI, which is a real life rating for the high output engine with the quality plus 15 because we have to. For the fuel system of this bad boy, it's going to be a direct injection single throttle setup with the um, intake manifold at a standard bid with the manifold size set. Just a few clicks down to a 46. With the fuel type we're using is at a super, really, it, it automatically went to here. And you get your timing map just to reduce the knocking and all the good stuff. Advance it to a negative 5 with the fuel mapping set to at a 65. And lastly, for the exhaust, all this good stuff. So for the headers, we're using some turbo cast mid headers with the header size set as is to a 50. With the exhaust diameter set to a 69.8 millimeters, which equals to 2.75 inches. And we're going to be using a high flow 3 cutting converter. No first swap for it, but with a reverse flow for the second one. And kept the quality at a zero. And we get the final horsepower rating at the real life of 510 horsepower at 5200 RPM. And the torque at 644.2 pounds feet of torque at 3000 RPM. So I know the real life torque rating is around like 500 pounds feet of torque. But at 644, I mean, that's pretty massive. Like a big difference compared to what we got for the horsepower rating at the real life 510 horsepower. And what we got right here for the torque. So for the heck of it, let's see what this muscle car sounding in light 6 sounds like right now. I know it's Buffalo and that good stuff, but doesn't sound as menacing compared to the V8 engines. For the drive type, it's obvious. Since it's a muscle car, we're going to be using the rear drive option with an advanced automatic 8-speed like some of the Chargers and Challengers and the like for most of these cars made by Dodge and all good stuff, technically Chrysler. For the top speed set, let's go let's check out here. 213, uh, 223 miles per hour, but I think I set this to around 216 for the sake of like the arrow and all that good stuff. A geared LSD, and let's keep on going for the tires and all good stuff. So for the tires, the radio sports compound tires, the front's at 245 millimeters, and the rear set to a 275 millimeters, maxed them out with some 20-inch alloy rims. 
for the brakes, I want to make these realistic as possible in a way. So we're using some vented disc brakes with a six piston count with the size set, pretty high one, at a 360 millimeters. And the rear will also be a vented disc with a three piston count with its size set to 320 millimeters. And drop this bad boy to a 50 and increase the pad type by a 75 at an almost full blown racing setting. For the under train, all this good stuff, well, for the sake of aerodynamics, full optimize with the brake airflow set to a 30 to reduce as much brake fade as possible in BMG Drive and in automation in general. So for the interior and all this good stuff, let's keep the two seats as is our full size seats, but put the janky ones in the back to reduce size seats because, well, it's a sports muscle car coupe guy we got going here. With a premium interior and a premium infotainment system. So now for the driver aids, all good stuff. We'll be using a hydraulic rack and pinion steering with electronic stability control and launch control with advanced 2000s or 2020 safety standards to be specific. And the reason why I did that because, well, in real life with GM and everybody, we got our form of OnStar on here with the automated system to contact emergency services. And finally, for the suspension of this bad boy, we're going to be selecting the Progressive Sprigs with adaptive dampers and active sway bars running on a sport preset with the ride height lowered to 280 millimeters. And right here, right away, not a whole lot of oversteering with the sportiness factor, but for the drivability, well, it kind of gets a mild oversteering, but it should really matter at the high speeds, even though we're going to put some aerodynamics in this vehicle with the front lip, the side skirts, rear diffuser, and the rear wing, all that good stuff, but this will change in the future. And for the heck of it, what is it like going around the automation test track without any aerodynamics applied whatsoever? It's gonna time, but not like running around the track, but it's strictly gonna time of a 2 minutes 11 seconds, 88 milliseconds. Hmm, seems fair enough. How about the quote unquote Top Gear test track at Airfield, which is basically, like I said, Top Gear test track of a time of 1 minute 19 seconds, 45 milliseconds. God damn, we gotta look that up. Hold on, I'm gonna look this, look this up. So apparently with a 1 minute 19 seconds, almost 500 millisecond time, it's just as good as a Lamborghini Gallardo LP560, a Porsche 997 GT2, an Aereo Atom 2 300. Sheesh. It's pretty much just as good as a freaking high-end sports car or a basic supercar. So right now, let's get ready to design this here bad boy by doing a time lapse of me build the car as so, with the front of the vehicle, sides, rear, and all that good stuff to be driven in BMG Drive. So let's commence the time lapse of this build right now. So for the design of this car, it's heavily inspired by the newer Dodge Challengers. Basically, what I'm making is a Challenger clone. With the front, I added a pair of LED headlights on both sides. One of them is for the turn signal, and the other is for the daytime running light. I also added a two-piece grill set for the top and bottom, including a hood scoop that goes above the engine and the hood. I've also added a basic front lip to improve aerodynamics on top of that. For the sides, I added a pair of side indicators, side reflectors, and a fuel door that says fuel, just like the real-life challengers use. I also add a lip fixture and paint it black to work as a side skirt to slightly improve aero. For the back, I add a rear diffuser and rear spoiler to cap off my aerodynamic fixtures. Furthermore, I add a couple of grill fixtures to work as the housing for the rear taillights and branding of this car. I add a pair of tubular LED lights on both sides with two large LED lights in the middle. One of them is for the turn signal and the other is for the reverse light. I struggled with this for a while to make it look consistent with the housing and to leave as little gaps as possible. I also added a rear backup camera to make it consistent with the advanced safety standards for this car. Lastly, I gave it a paint job and named the car in automation. So after getting everything done with this build, here's what it came out. This is the 2022 Hirasei Atrium SP6 Fiero. This knockoff Dodge Challenger serves as a what if if the Stellantis Hurricane I-6 becomes a reality for muscle cars. It may lack a menacing engine note, but it does come with a powerful twin turbo engine to make up for it. Alright, so I finally got this here knockoff Dodge Challenger all set and done here. So despite our only three problems with this car before I explored this BPG drive, such as the front and rear damper speed quite hard and the engine is retarding the ignition timing to reduce the knocking and all that good stuff, let's jump on over to BPG drive to see what this car is like. So here I am at the recently released map of Johnson Valley and we got the freaking here he say... What are you boys do it here. We got my modded cars here to freaking, what is this, my turbo diesel sports car and my German police car. 
What are you doing in America, buddy? So anyways, let's get myself situated to start our base performance test. So for our first test we'll be doing is a 0 to 62 acceleration test, followed by the 62 to 0 brake test, and lastly, a top speed run with this vehicle. And there goes my frickin' Roblox car, so get ready to start things off here in 3, 2, NASCAR, go. Accelerate. Gear 2, gear 3, 0 to 62 at 3.76 seconds of 189.82 feet, so acceleration-wise, it's pretty good, despite not having a V8, like a 6.2 supercharged engine, or a 392 aka a 6.4 liter engine. So it's past the wrong side of the road, cut this guy off, brake. Breaking as we go, 62 to 0 2.27 seconds of 97.93 feet. While well, braking performance-wise in terms of the time and distance, I'd say it's pretty decent. I mean, fairly realistic in terms of the size of the calipers and all that good stuff, the pistons. Well, I'd say that's pretty great of a brake performance. So for top speed run rate effect, we get a very similar 0 to 62 at 3.8 seconds flat of 191.01 feet. So we've been through traffic as so. There goes my NASCAR again. Am I... Really my award-winning, uh, what? Oh, let me see that again. We've been through traffic. Ah! Okay, 170 miles an hour. I was about to save my Sastava Slither XB. That was my prize for those who won my very, very first challenge, which is basically the 80s budget off-roader. That was pretty close. I haven't really thought about like, any modern-day challenges for, like, my Discord server and all that good stuff. I haven't done so lately. All right, that was a close-ass recovery. Let's keep on going. Our right, we're approaching red line. Oh, Jesus. Approaching red line, we got up to 213 miles an hour, still at around the high 200s. Wait, should I go the wrong way again? Well, whatever. Into my prize award-winning vehicle, my Slither XP, 208 miles an hour. We were so close to getting to top speed, but this is good enough. I've exchanged insurance information. Well, good enough. So... Stop it, please. Let's do a time trial run right now. All right, so I got the car all set and done here at the pole position marker at West Coast USA. We're going to be using the second version of the log racing circuit with the chicane. And it's going to be two laps without a rolling start. So let's get ready to start things off here in three, two, one, rev it, go. Launch control will be a ruin today, but whatever. Better 0 to about 3.5 seconds. And in terms of cornering, break at the 150-ish marker. I was a little too fast there, but in terms of the braking, pretty decent. So it seems like the car, we got the backfire. <laughs> I was say, it kind of understeers at like moderate high speeds, it seems like. So hit the brakes here. Now we're doing some hood cat stuff here. How about an ample right hand corner? 80 something miles an hour, slight backfiring. About 90 till we get to the top of the curb there. Now let's get used to this. We got a chicane, still on the brakes. Jeez, it's even hot on the brakes, over 670 degrees in the front, about 500 in the back. And coming up to the final corner, I still- another backfire, I still can't get enough out of the temperature, it goes For some odd reason, so first lap, 2 minutes, 11 seconds, 480 milliseconds. I'll say, I don't know if it's because the ECS is like reducing power to the engine, hence cutting off the turbocharger a little bit, going through the wastegate and all that good stuff. I just find it to be pretty weird, like every time you turn the steering wheel just a tad, not even just letting off the throttle, but just turn the steering wheel just a little bit, that's where the turbocharger kind of goes a little bit mental up in here. And I also just noticed, since the engine makes 510 horsepower in automation, it's making 488 horsepower and 625 pounds-feet of torque at beam and G. That's pretty weird, so our final corner, final straightaway of a 2 minutes, 5 seconds, 475 milliseconds of a total time, putting us in first place of 4 minutes, 16 seconds, 954 milliseconds, compared to my second place car, which is the Metaceptor EX, which I think this was my street legal sleeper car, I believe. Whatever, go to free roam, everything as is. Get me, get ourselves out of here. How's the engine still running despite... This type of collision with the intercooler exposed. So the brakes are damaged, a tire has popped according to game. Well, we can see the damage to the vehicle. First of all, can it drive? We can put the power down, but I don't think we can steer any more. Almost at the tire barriers. And we're spanking in the tire barriers, so... <laughs> guess that's it with this car. So the final part of the video, let's give it the V8 treatment, the economical treatment, this and that, by going over to the good old map of Leap of Death to drop this here Challenger clone. So until you get to the very top of the map, right now. 
All right, Chrysler, please don't sue me as hit the gas pedal right now. Hit the gas pedal. Accelerate as we go. Second gear, the third gear, the fourth gear, and all that good stuff. There goes the front lip. 67 miles an hour upon the launch. Hmm, not too bad. And now only that, we are like still... Uh, I thought we were, we were kind of leveling out at first. Wait a the brakes. So we unlevel it out to the point where we... Damn. I would say roll forward even more or backwards, but we're almost like level up in here. So it's 32 times it right here. Camera as is. Oh boy, is that the shocks or the chassis doing all that? Hit the roof as so. Full time. Flipping on over. All four tires have been popped and the edge is still good. Everything as is. Are we going to stay up here? Uh, maybe? I swear. We can keep on going without using the node grabber, but hold your breath. Okay, here we go. I want to say, if I stopped at that second hit, I swear, I mean, that never even happened to me to be stopping at, like, the second or third hit off of the cliff face here. So the main engine is broken, and I think we have to dough grab it down to the frickin' pond. And the answer is, yes, we have to. Alright, here goes nothing, kids. There we go. Now we got the car, and... Splash. There you go, Chris, move. And dropping the car as so, so we got the engine and the drivetrain, drive shaft, everything completely out of place and exposed up in here. So the final look at this here car, so we got the side of it, basically looking like the Dodge Charger type of concept that we got going here. The back end's having a seizure, right side, same thing, the front end, completely unrecognizable. So that'll do the automation at BMG Drive with the Hirosei Atrium SP6 Fiero. You're probably asking this to yourself, is this really a muscle car using a Stellantis Hurricane Inline 6 engine? Car culture tends to loosely define a muscle car of having a big ass V8 that makes a ton of horsepower. This engine kinda does it with two less cylinders and two turbochargers. Not even a single supercharger exists with this engine. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tries Rising Up, and signing out.